Greetings. Thank you so much for joining us again for Your Faith Questions, a segment that has just been set aside in order to address some of those faith questions that you may be having. We are glad that you have joined us today and if this is your first time to actually watch us, we ask and request that you go back and check out the other episodes that we have done. We have done quite a number now. We continue to encourage you to just send your faith questions. We would love to interact with us. And so today, again, as usual, I am joined by our senior pastor, Reverend Kalisto Odede. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much, Pastor Mokaya. Yes, always a pleasure. It's a joy. <laughs> Fantastic. And today we are discussing toxic churches. Yes, you heard me right. Toxic churches. So kindly, let us just get right into it. So, senior pastor. Yes. Usually, many times when one makes a call for salvation, the follow-up statements that I have heard preachers make is, if you actually have been saved, look for a Bible-teaching, Bible-believing church. Why is it crucial that we ask people to look for a Bible-believing and Bible-teaching church? I think it's important because uh, uh, as a young Christian in the faith, the Bible recommends that we desire the sincere milk of the word mm. uh, that we may thereby be able to grow. And if you do go to a faith community that is not deeply grounded into the word of God, mm. then the possibility of growing in your faith is uh, extremely limited. But at the same time, you may actually be totally derailed uh, from uh, the right kind of faith mm. that would uh, lead you into a vibrant relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. So it's quite crucial yeah. that one actually, uh, once you've come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, you identify uh, a, a, a church that is teaching scripture, mm. believing scripture, yeah. and you become part and parcel of that uh, community. All right. And, and I guess part of the reason is because we do not want them to stray and find themselves in what we have come to refer to as a toxic church. Yes, uh, uh, that's another reason, <laughs> and I think a very key one, yeah. uh, that uh, although uh, uh, there are groups out there uh, that would call themselves church yeah. and uh, uh, would be identified as Christian mm. uh, community, that not all of them are the same. There are some yeah. Yeah. that we can refer to as uh, toxic. Toxic. Now, this is where my struggle begins. Toxic church. Isn't that even a paradox or an oxymoron of some sort? How can a church be toxic? Please expound that for us. Uh, the word toxic, by its very meaning, uh, communicates poisonous. Mm. So when we are talking of a church that is toxic, we are talking of a church that is a, a, a poisonous. And uh, uh, what we do mean is not just poisonous in terms of uh, 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 bringing death, mm. although some toxic churches have resulted in death, yeah. but it is poisonous uh, in that the kind of teachings that they have, mm. the kind of structures that they have, they are churches that we would refer to as aberrational. They, are, they have uh, veered off. Uh, they, they are not holding on in terms of orthodoxy, the right kind of beliefs, yeah. and also orthopraxy, the right kind of practice. Yeah. So there are some of their beliefs, there are some of their practices uh, that have actually veered off. Uh, but it's not just that. The end result of it is that uh, anyone who consumes uh, what they are propagating, yeah. why we refer to it as toxic, mm. is that it has a negative influence on the individual. And the negative influence is that it creates a, a different persona. It mm. creates a different you yeah. from your actual you. Yeah. Uh, uh, the you that is more of a, uh, a group identity. Yeah. The you that is more of a, uh, uh, an individual that is even running away from the family. Mm. Uh, so it creates a different, it alters a person's uh, 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 personality, yeah. a person's being uh, through the kind of influence that mm. they have. And because mm. of that, uh, we tend to refer to them as being toxic. Yeah. Uh, because when a person consumes them, they don't remain the same. Oh, all right. And then what would you say then are the telltale signs of a, of a toxic church? What are those signs that we can actually see and say, mm, actually, this could be a toxic church? Uh, thank you. Uh, I have mentioned that... Uh, uh, we, we need to look at uh, 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 orthodoxy, and orthodoxy we simply means uh, 
the right kind of belief. Yeah. There is the right kind of belief that is acceptable to the historical Christian faith uh, that is based on the Bible. Mm. And uh, secondly, the right kind of practice, of uh, orthopraxy. And the right kind of practice uh, are practices that would honor God. Now, in some of the toxic churches, uh, they lead people to the extent that we have watched people are eating grass. Mm. That's not the right kind of practice. Yeah. Uh, uh, they lead people uh, to the extent uh, uh, people are dressed in a very strange way. Mm. Uh, that's not the right kind of uh, practice. Mm. Now, when we would begin to look at what are some of the signs, I think it begins with the leadership. As we look at those churches, uh, what does their leadership look like? Mm. Oftentimes, they would have uh, a figure that takes almost a messianic proportion. Yeah. A figure that is uh, revered, mm. that is honored, yeah. whose word is uh, 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 almost final. Yeah. It may be a personality, it may be an individual. Uh, uh, but this figure is uh, so revered and uh, respected that uh, his word controls uh, uh, the group. Mm. Secondly, the, 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 the group would be engaged in what I can only refer to as a, a mind control. When an individual becomes part and parcel of this group, they lose the ability to be independent. Mm. They can't think on their selves. Thinking, especially independent thinking, is highly discouraged yeah. within the group. Mm. Uh, they get into what we call group think. Mm. Uh, you think as a group. Uh, mm. If you think independently, yeah. uh, you are either warned mm. or uh, you are chastised or you are disciplined. Yeah. Uh, uh, w we need to look at it also because uh, uh, not only does the group, th uh, the, the mind manipulation uh, make a person get into group setting, mm. it also makes a person actually go to the extent that sometimes there is isolationism. They isolate people yeah. from their family members. Yeah. So sometimes we have had marriages breaking. We have had children running away uh, from their home. Mm. Uh, they encourage elitism. When you are part and parcel of that group, uh, they tell you, you are the chosen one. <laughs> you are the only one who will get into heaven. Yeah. All the others yeah. are lost or yeah. the others belong to the devil, mm. including your family members mm. who are not part of you. Yeah. So don't listen to them. So they have a kind of elitism. They, they propagate a lot of phobia, fear, uh, especially the fear that uh, if you are outside this group, if you are uh, involved, uh, uh, move outside mm. this group, uh, mm. you have no hope for salvation. Yeah. Not only that, you will not survive. Mm. But some of them, the fear is also including intimidation, where people who are members uh, are actually threatened yeah. or intimidated. Mm. If you leave, uh, 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 a curse will come upon you. Mm. If you leave, you will not live very, very long. Yeah. Others uh, 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 go to the extent where they bring disruption to lives. So that if you find, uh, like recently, we heard of students uh, uh, who had left uh, school and they had run to a group in Mombasa, mm. uh, a, a cultic group or a, a toxic group. Yeah. Now, when you go to that group, uh, they actually uh, uh, disrupt your life. If you are in business, sometimes yeah. they tell you the kind of business to have. Mm. They tell you the kind of person to marry. Mm. Uh, they tell you uh, to stop going to school. Yeah. Uh, a number of them are eschatological. They mm. tend to talk about the end is very, very near. Mm. So avoid some things. Yeah. Uh, and they're preaching are geared towards uh, uh, eschatological direction. Yeah. Now, uh, it's also important for us to note that uh, some of them actually make people work for the group. They, uh, uh, they live on the effort of the group members. Yeah. So you have a house, they will take that. You have some money, they'll take that. Uh, and, and, and a number of us used to think that it is only, uh, uh, maybe it is people who are not educated who can be confused or deceived. But you'd find even professors, you'd find even uh, medical doctors, even yeah. engineers uh, yeah. becoming part and parcel of these groups uh, yeah. because of uh, the mind control aspect, mm. which is mm. different from uh, brainwashing. They're yeah. not necessarily brainwashers. They are they're kind of, uh, their mind has lost the ability to think independently mm. uh, outside the group. Yeah. Uh, when they think outside the group, uh, they cannot go that direction. Mm. Mm. And so it is important to look at the leaders. Yeah. Is he an individual who claims a messianic kind of uh, mm. entity? Mm. Is he an individual who sometimes reads themselves 
in the Bible. Mm. Now, there is a sense in which all of us need to read ourselves yeah. in the Bible. Yeah. When the Bible says, greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world, yeah. it's talking about me. Yeah. When the Bible says we are seated in the heavenly places mm. in mm. Christ Jesus, it's talking about a me. And, um, and me also. And, and you also, also. Yes. that's right. Yes. But when an individual begins saying, uh, uh, when the Bible says, uh, uh, John the Baptist uh, who was to come has come and I am the one. Mm. Uh, when an individual begins saying, I am the angel yeah. that is talking with the Lord there. Mm. When an individual begins saying, I am the two witnesses that is appearing here. Yeah. Then we need to begin questioning because yeah. that individual now is uh, reading themselves mm. into the Bible. They are actually claiming to be part and parcel of the yeah. Bible. Yeah. So we need to watch on the leaders. Mm. What kind of leaders do they have? Mm. Do they live holy lives? Mm. Uh, do they live righteous lives? Mm. Uh, what's their relationship with materialism? Because a lot of those leaders yeah. are actually uh, living, uh, uh, fleecing people based on power. So their idea is to be powerful. And to yeah. be powerful, sometimes their security detail. Mm. Uh, because they associate power with what politicians have. Yeah. So the larger your security detail is, uh, the more okay. powerful you yeah. are yeah. because they are living for power. Yeah. Uh, those individuals uh, would sometimes mistreat, especially the women. Mm. The women are required to live and walk in certain ways, uh, dress in certain manner, mm. uh, 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 almost a kind of uh, subjugation yeah. that they express on the women. Yeah. Now, we need to think broadly about the leader. And mm. when we begin seeing leaders who are acting in certain way, mm. we need to start raising up uh, yeah. our alarm system mm. because mm. they may be indicators uh, mm. that these actually yeah. may be a toxic church. Wow, th that sounds scary. And, and there are things you have mentioned, perhaps there are probable dangers. But I would like you to just touch a bit on what then are the dangers? Because someone may be saying, okay, maybe I am in a similar situation. And as you are talking, um, I couldn't help but think of, you know, certain scenarios where yeah. we have that playing out. What would you say actually are the dangers of toxic churches? Uh, uh as I've already mentioned, uh, number one, they alter a person's uh, mm. uh, 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 individuality yeah. so that you can't think independently. Mm. Uh, you are not your, yourself. Yeah. You are influenced negatively. Mm. You don't reason properly. Yeah. Number two, they disrupt families. Mm -hmm. There are children who have run away from home. Yeah. Uh, there are people who have stopped working. Mm. There are others who have stopped going to school. Mm. Uh, there are even marriages that have actually been broken down mm. as a, a, a result of toxic churches. Yeah. Because the leaders have spoken some things, uh, uh, saying this man is mm. not for you, or that mm. woman is not for you, mm. that have broken down marriages. But even worse still, these groups have led to the extent uh, that individuals have sometimes become part and parcel of uh, uh, terrorist groups. Mm. Uh, and we have heard of these in, uh, in the USA, We've heard of uh, a Camp David group. Mm. We've heard of uh, 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 David jo uh, Jones, uh, who actually in Guyana mm. led a group of people into the city of Johnston and uh, uh, led them to drink poison. And 900 people actually died as a result of drinking poison that uh, 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 Jones uh, uh, led them, uh, Jim Jones, Jim Jones rather, mm. led yeah. them into. Yeah. We've heard of uh, uh, here in our neighbor, uh, from our neighbor Uganda, mm. uh, uh, movement uh, uh, of uh, 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 the restoration of Ten Commandments mm. in Western Uganda. Yeah. And the movement of restoration of Ten Commandments in Western Uganda invited all their members uh, uh, into a church, mm. A big church and they used to live in communes together and then they poured petrol uh, locked everyone inside and they set them all af uh, aflame 700 people died in in uganda these groups are such that once your mind is controlled someone can tell you uh, take the holy communion that has been laced with cyanide mm. that's what jim jones did mm. and everyone took the holy communion that was laced with cyanide Someone can tell you that when you die right now, you'll go straight into heaven. Mm. Someone can tell you that actually when you kill certain groups of people, mm. you are mm. actually doing it for the Lord. Mm. And because you have lost your individuality yeah. and the ability to think, mm. you are acting in terms of group uh, think. These groups becomes extremely, extremely dangerous. Now, on top of that, there is, of course, the faith element. Mm that uh, 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 apart from the social dynamics that they bring, the fifth element is such that 
a person actually loses their vital relationship with the Lord yeah. and they only have a, a second or a third hand religion. Mm. Their religion comes down to them through uh, either the man of God mm. or uh, through the uh, individual leader. Uh, they do not have a direct connection with yeah. God. Yeah. And whatever the leader tells them, uh, actually they just believe that is what God is yeah. saying. Yeah. Uh, whether the leader had a dream mm. or a vision and the leader today says, mm. do this, mm. everyone responds in that yeah. way yeah. because because they have lost the ability to think uh, mm. independently mm. and to be able to connect back with the word of God. Yeah. So they are actually very dangerous. Uh, uh, socially, they are dangerous mm. in terms of uh, a career. They are dangerous in terms of even the health uh, of individuals. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, sometimes I see some of uh, 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 the toxic churches that are in Kenya. Mm. And uh, I worry, my concern is uh, if this leader one day tells these people mm -hmm. uh, 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 that end has come, and the way the end has come, go and take poison. Yeah. I worry because uh, I see many, many individuals who would actually die mm. because they would believe uh, mm. it's the right kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's just so sad. And, and it seems like these are things that obviously a rational person should be able to see. And you've mentioned rightly, a number of people have actually been mind controlled. But again, I still wonder, why do they seem to attract such multitudes? Yeah, that, that's uh, a question that uh, uh, perhaps is difficult to answer. Mm. Uh, the only, uh, I think, response we can give in a setting like this uh, is that uh, how do they recruit their members? Mm. Uh, some of them recruit their members on one-on-one. -on -one, yeah. And when you are being recruited, it is a deceptive recruitment because you are not told the whole thing. Mm. You are only told the glamorous. Yeah. A number of years ago, uh, 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 in uh, uh, the early uh, 1990s, uh, being in this city and involved in Christian ministry, mm. I knew of a group that was uh, uh, recruiting members and it was also a toxic church. Mm. And uh, if you are a young person, students in the university, they would uh, send uh, 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 Kenatco taxis. Those days, Kenatco taxis were actually uh, uh, Mercedes-Benz taxis. <laughs> they would send the Mercedes-Benz taxis to pick you up, to take you where the meetings are. Yeah. And uh, young people would just think, wow, this is mm. the life, mm. being picked up by a, a yeah. Mercedes-Benz yeah. taxis. Yeah. So they, they would show you more of the great image, more yeah. of the good image. Mm. And uh, you get uh, 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 deceived mm. that this is all that is it. Yeah. It is. But yeah. once you have gotten in, then you begin to discover, uh, 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 albeit too late, mm. that there were other things uh, inside mm. this group uh, yeah. than the things that they had just shown us. Yeah. But secondly, uh, apart from the deception, is also uh, the fact that uh, they, they, they try to meet people's needs. Mm. And uh, those needs may be social, yeah. those needs may be uh, spiritual. Mm. Uh, they, they try to identify certain specific needs. So when people go to them at their points of vulnerability, mm. uh, uh, I, I am needy, I'm either sick, I am uh, uh, challenged financially, I have yeah. an economic situation, yeah. uh, and, and they promise you this is what will happen to you, this is the kind of mm. help you'll get. Uh, so people are drawn uh, by that. Yeah. Uh, uh, thirdly, uh, a number of them have very charismatic leaders who at one point or another have been engaged in uh, either the miraculous uh, mm. or uh, the prophetic gifts. Yeah. And because of the supernatural uh, happening in the life of the leader, yeah. uh, that tends to draw a lot of people because a mm. number of us uh, mm. want to encounter uh, yeah. uh, the supernatural. Yeah. Yeah. And if we are not getting it mm. in the authentic and genuine mm. churches mm. Uh, and a fellow down the road comes mm. up, uh, mm. regardless of the uh, kind of thing he's practicing yeah. Yeah. Uh, and he tells us he'll perform the supernatural, mm. we have the tendency to begin following yeah. and looking for this guy yeah. uh, just to encounter and experience the supernatural. Mm. So they draw people, uh, a lot of people, because of uh, yeah. uh, the supernatural. Yeah. Others, uh, uh, it is because of uh, uh, materialism. Mm. They have the promise that they give to people. Mm. You'll actually become wealthy yeah. uh, when you become part and parcel yeah. of our group. Uh, yeah. uh, you will flourish. Unfortunately, mm. the only person who is becoming wealthy is the leader <laughs> themselves. The leader, yeah. No one else in the yeah. group seems to be becoming yeah. wealthy. Yeah. yeah. So those are some of the reasons why they, they actually draw, draw yeah. people. Yeah. A number of them would identify, particularly those of us who are Africans, a number of them would identify very deeply with our African culture. Yeah. And you'll find that those groups are a bit mm. syncretic. 
Celtic. They are yeah. a mixture of African traditional religion, uh, mm. uh, voodooism, uh, mm. juju, yeah. uh, magic, and mm. the like. Uh, mm. and, and, and they draw some people simply because of that element of uh, uh, answering some yeah. uh, uh, metaphysical questions that we are asking as mm. Africans. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You, you've mentioned something about the supernatural, and, and I want to um, just tag on that a bit. You've mentioned sometimes in what we would consider authentic churches, people may see as though the miraculous is not happening. And so they will go, in your own words, to the mm. fellow down the road. And, and sometimes I feel like we that, um, you know, in what may not be termed as toxic churches, fall into two extremes. The one extreme is either to say, those miracles are not real. Mm. But I was having a conversation with a friend of mine recently who attended one of those crusades a while back. And this person called for rain. And it actually rained. He was saying he was there and he saw it. And so he's not denying the fact that something miraculous happened. And I guess what I want to ask is, is it always that when the supernatural happens or when the miraculous happens that it is the hand of God at play? Uh, let me answer that in two ways. First, uh, maybe three. First, uh, recorded investigation in some of those uh, uh, meetings have shown that there are some of those mm. uh, said miracles uh, yeah. that are actually acted. Yeah. And we have seen in our own uh, television sets, mm. individuals mm. who actually uh, uh, were paid some money mm. to pretend that they had experienced miracle. Yeah. That's first. Secondly, uh, some of those individuals, when they began their ministries, mm. They were actually people who used to walk with the Lord mm. and who used to love the Lord mm. before they deviated into these uh, yeah. uh, toxic uh, dimensions. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. So at some point, they honored the Lord. Then they deviated, and they deviated mm. to such an extent uh, that they are taking the place of God mm. in the lives of uh, uh, their followers. Mm. Uh, so uh, now when they are doing the things they are doing, uh, we do not uh, 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 recognize them as what they used to be mm. because they are totally different kinds of people. Yeah. I think the third thing that is very important coming out of uh, Deuteronomy uh, chapter 13. Yeah. Deuteronomy 13 and verse 1 onwards uh, says that uh, if uh, a prophet mm -hmm. or a man comes to you yeah. and uh, tells you that uh, 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 there is a miracle that will mm -hmm. take place mm -hmm. uh, or something great will happen yeah. and uh, it does happen. Yeah. Uh, and then the same person tells mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. do not follow uh, Jehovah. Yeah, they turn you away. From they turn God. you away from the ways yeah. of the Lord. Yeah. Then you know that that is not God. Yeah. As a matter of fact, the Bible goes on to say that person should be stoned to yeah. death. In other words, uh, that there are some deceptions that will take place. Uh, and these deceptions mm. uh, are not actually coming from God. They are mm. deceiving spirits yeah. that will actually even conjure up miracles. And we need to be aware of that. We recognize, yes, they are genuine and authentic miracles that mm. do take place. Uh, but also at the same time, uh, we need to be aware that some people are not operating in the yeah. spirit of the Lord. Yeah. They are operating under different kind of spirits. Uh, as a matter of fact, some of my friends in Nigeria yeah. have uh, uh, shared with me how uh, some so-called church pastors in toxic churches mm. would actually agree with uh, 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 go to juju men yeah. uh, and uh, buy off some juju power mm. so that they would go and uh, perform uh, uh, some miracles mm. because that will draw people yeah. and that will also give them some money. So we yeah. just need to be alert and aware of that factor. Mm. I, I give a biblical example. Yeah. Simon uh, in Samaria yeah. is a great man. Mm. He is a magician. He's performing mm. great things. Mm. And, and, and that seems to be genuine. He's drawing people. Yeah, people are saying, they're calling him the great power. Uh, the great power. Yeah. He's doing marvelous things. Mm. And yet in the middle of that, uh, when the real power comes mm. through Peter, yeah. he is proved to be actually fake. Yeah. He is proved to be a deceptive mm. individual. Mm. So even now, yeah. we do have individuals like that. Mm. Is, it, is it perhaps what um, Paul would say to Timothy as he writes to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and he says just because of some of the things that you have mentioned that they will forbid people from yeah. and, and Paul says now the spirit expressly says that in later times some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits mm -hmm. and teachings of demons through the insincerity of liars whose consciences are seared who forbid marriage and require abstinence from foods that God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth so is this a similar case? That actually some of these teachings, as the scriptures say, could mm, be mm, teachings mm, from deceitful spirits mm, and teachings mm. of demons. 
you, you, Pastor Mukaya, you know, uh, uh, one of the things that uh, sometimes we find difficult uh, uh, to acknowledge mm. is that uh, demons can say something good about the Lord. Uh, <laughs> we try to yeah. persuade ourselves that is mm. not true. But mm. when I read my Bible, yeah. I find that that's actually true. Mm. A girl who is a diviner yes. follows Paul along mm. and uh, actually is declaring, these yeah. men are yeah. the servants of the Most High God, yeah. uh, proclaiming to you the, the, the word of the Lord. Mm. And Paul cast out a demon out of her. Yeah. And she used to divine. She would tell mm. people things about themselves yeah. that one would not have known in a natural way. Yeah. Uh, one could only know them mm. supernaturally. Mm. And yet it was a demon who was at mm. work within her. Yeah. So it is true, yes, uh, there are individuals who would actually go to the extent of forbidding marriage, mm. uh, denying food, and uh, encouraging different kinds of lifestyle. Yeah. But the power that is operating from within them is not God's power at all. It's actually uh, evil power. Let me go on to mention yes. this. I think it's important for me to clarify this for our viewers. There are only two sources. Mm. Of supernatural power in the world yeah there isn't a third source of supernatural power mm. the first source of supernatural power is god yeah it is powerful is all powerful he can do miraculous things. yeah the power that comes from god will acknowledge god will mm. bring glory and honor to god yeah will seek to uh, set god apart will not seek uh, human glory yeah the other source of power is actually satan himself mm. And Satan can also perform false miracles, yeah. deceptive miracles. Yeah. And uh, the one which is from Satan may camouflage as coming from God, mm. but it will seek to deviate people from allegiance to God yeah. and following the ways of God. So yeah. people will actually find themselves either a following man or completely derailed from deep commitment mm. to God mm. because that power is not coming from God. Yeah. We need to be aware of that. Yeah. Even certain powers that some have said, for example, in the Asian subcontinent, where uh, 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 I am aware that uh, there are individuals who can even perform a surgery on you without cutting you. They actually even remove a growth, a tumor from inside mm. you without cutting you, seeing uh, the chi or the energy, uh, as they call it. Uh, that she and that internal energy that sometimes we hear about uh, even in the new age movement yeah, uh, is yeah. not coming from God mm. because people who have actually expressed that power, oftentimes when they have been prayed for, demons have been cast out of mm. them. Mm. Mm. Wow. And this is just, it's intense and, and you're quite passionate about this. And, and having known you for, for a few years, I, I can testify, at least from my interactions with you, that you're not a leader of a toxic church, <laughs> nor are you toxic yourself. And the question that I have is, what is the caution to the people that perhaps are not in a toxic church and are feeling this conversation is not for me? I don't need to know all this. Why is it an important conversation even to we that might consider ourselves to be in authentic churches? It's amazing some of the people who have been misled mm. that uh, they were in authentic churches. Mm. One of the other characteristics of this group is not fishing from uh, the lake, yeah. they fish from the pond. Mm. In other words, they like going for people who are already in other churches yeah. rather than doing evangelism out yeah. there, going for totally non-Christians. Yeah. And why are they able to capture people who are already in other churches? Mm. Because there are some individuals who think, ah, that can't happen to me, mm. I'm too strong, mm. I will not be de derailed at all. Yeah. So it's important that individuals begin thinking uh, over these issues mm. because uh, if you are not in, then maybe your neighbor. Yeah. Then maybe your friend, then maybe yeah. a family member, yeah. uh, then maybe another person down mm. the road. Mm. And maybe you will encounter them because mm. they keep coming to you. Yeah. And so you need to be able to respond to them mm. when you do know them. Yeah. So uh, even individuals who are not into this need to be alert yeah. and aware yeah. because uh, they can also be easily deceived. Yeah. So that they can be able to mark them out mm. when they see them uh, mm. and say, no, 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 this is yeah. a toxic group. Yeah. 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 And John, John says this in, in his letter. Um, second John, and, and I'll just read from verse 9. The context starts from way back. But second John, verse 9, this is what he says. Everyone who goes on ahead and does not abide in the teaching of Christ does not have God. Whoever abides in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. 
But then he continues to say something interesting, verse 10. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not receive him into your house or give him any greeting. For whoever greets him takes part in his wicked works. Mm. Wow. <laughs> so what are we to do in light of what John is saying here? John is speaking out of a context and uh, an interesting context because greetings uh, for uh, the Jewish people was extremely elaborate. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't uh, uh, the way we do hi, hi, and you go your own way. Yeah. Uh, you actually spent a long, long mm. time together. Mm. Uh, it was almost an intimate, uh, intimate kind of interaction yeah. where uh, at the end of that greeting, you've known a lot about one individual. Mm. You've welcomed one individual. Sometimes you have hugged. Uh, and, and John is saying, if you are doing that with a person who has deviated, mm. and they have deviated to such an extent that you are still treating them as if they have not, yeah. you are sending a wrong signal. Mm. Anyone looking at you yeah. will begin to say, ah, uh, this is an associate of so-and-so. Mm. So a weaker Christian might be stumbled yeah. uh, simply because uh, they saw me or they saw you yeah. uh, interacting with this fellow mm. very, very closely. Mm. And so they are not on their guard yeah. against the teaching of these people. Yeah. Yeah. So John says, treat them at a distance. Yeah. In fact, the East African revival list uh, used to talk of a long wooden, uh, a, 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 a long wooden stick, mm. which cannot conduct at all. Uh, <laughs> don't so, interact with them at close quarters. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, in other words, we, we can be cordial to them, yeah. we can be respectful to them, uh, but in terms of close relationships, that is where we draw the line. That's right. Okay. That's right. All right. But we can still evangelize to them. We, we do. In fact, as a matter of fact. Uh, 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 one uh, uh, needs to be polite to them. Mm. I've had quite a lot mm. of interactions uh, with people like this. Uh, yeah. uh, be polite to them uh, and uh, 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 look for some point of uh, uh, engaging them that will yeah. challenge them. Yeah. Yes. I, I'd mentioned something like, you know, evangelizing to them. Uh, and I guess that lends the question, can someone be saved and yet be in a toxic church? Or can a leader of a toxic church actually be a saved Christian? Uh, it's interesting that you ask that because uh, uh, at the very outset, uh, individuals who get into toxic churches uh, sometimes think they are very genuinely serving the Lord. Mm. Uh, so at the very beginning, uh, they, they uh, have not been deceived. They are going in thinking they are serving the Lord. Then along the way, uh, they get in deeper and deeper mm. to the extent that they finally get derailed yeah. uh, and they begin going away from the things of faith. But just to mention here, I think it's also very important uh, uh, that uh, 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 toxic churches uh, may vary doctrinally mm. in terms of the orthodoxy they believe yeah. and praxis in terms of their practices. Yeah. But it is important to note that there are a number of them that outwardly when you check their beliefs, you take check on their uh, what uh, articles that they have written down yeah. in terms of articles of their faith. Yeah. You may not see much of a difference mm. with what your article of faith is. Yeah. But when you get deep into their practices, yeah. then you begin finding they are quite a long way mm. away from what uh, uh, Orthodox Christians need to be practicing. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, those will derail people. So you mm. may find an individual who may be genuine there, mm. but they have become derailed in that uh, uh, they have lost their ability mm. to free themselves. So they yeah. need to be drawn out uh, yeah. uh, uh, and, and brought from where yeah. they are at. Uh, yeah. uh, yes. Oh, okay. And, and I guess my final question is to ask, um, what can someone do if perhaps they are watching uh, at this time and they are mm. feeling, maybe I am in a toxic church, or they know someone that is in a toxic church, what, what should they do? I think for those who are already in a toxic church, it is important for us to uh, examine, uh, I would emphasize, our leadership, uh, how do they relate with us? Are they fleecing us? Uh, uh, what kind of people are they? And ask some very important questions about uh, the kind of leadership that we have. Uh, we examine our doctrine. We examine our practices. And if we should find that actually where I am at is actually a toxic situation, that we genuinely repent and ask God's forgiveness because God is actually able to forgive us. Uh, I would recommend that uh, you cut off relationship uh, 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 begin to seek uh, a genuine church as we started that is preaching the word of God mm -hmm. uh, or a genuine Christian that you know believes the word of God uh, and uh, get in touch with them and let them help you as you walk out of this. Uh. But if you have a relative who is involved with this, uh, what some uh, uh, relatives have done, which I would not recommend, uh, is that they have tried to actually hijack their member 
and then deprogram them, take them through a process of just uh, reorienting them and, and trying to free them from the clutches of these uh, uh, particular leaders. Uh, I would not recommend that because when you do that, these people have been taught and they have been told that you will suffer persecution. Uh, they have been told that the people who are persecuting you belong to Satan uh, and uh, uh, that's why your, your family members are persecuting you. So one needs to be very, very cautious and careful that you do not do that to them. But I do think also it is important that uh, 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 as we think through it, that we look at uh, 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 these members uh, and love them. Love them regardless of uh, uh, how far they are gone and uh, 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 continue trying to get in touch with them, whether they are trying to cut off relationship. Uh, get in touch with them and try to love them back uh, into the kingdom of God. When they are needy, please get in touch with them and just check out uh, how can we be able to help you here. But when you have opportunity, point out their errors to them. A lot of people who have left uh, 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 toxic churches uh, have left because someone busted their balloon. Mm. Someone showed them uh, this is actually what you are holding. So if you have an opportunity, bust their balloons. Uh, show them that actually they are in error as you read the scripture and just uh, prove to them uh, from the word of God. I think that's important uh, as we think through this. Amen. Yes. Amen. Uh, and finally, what will be your closing remarks to those that are watching? I would continue to urge you that these are areas where we need to be cautious as we look at our churches around, uh, that there may be some churches that are actually toxic, I would continue to encourage you also to read on these matters. Uh, I have two books uh, that uh, I, I just want to highly recommend to you. Uh, one of them is written by Mark DuPont. Uh, and Mark DuPont uh, has written this book called Toxic Churches, Restoration from Spiritual Abuse. Uh, toxic Churches, uh, Restoration from Spiritual Abuse by Mark uh, DuPont, Toxic Churches. Now, the other one is written by Ronald Enroth. Uh, uh, Ronald Enroth has written this book, uh, Churches That Abuse. Uh, just like you have child abuse and you have human rights abuse, there is also churches that actually abuse their members. And uh, you need to beware, am I being abused where I am at? If you notice that you are being abused, uh, please seek help and seek help urgently so that God may be able to reclaim you and redeem you. And for those of us who know people and individuals in this category, let's continue to pray for them, asking God to open their eyes that they may be able to see their fault and their errors and come to the knowledge of the truth. Amen. Amen. And perhaps you are there and you may need further help regarding this matter either for yourself or a loved one, feel free to contact us um, through the email media at nairobibaptist.co.ke and we will be getting back to you. Our desire is that the Lord would actually deliver you and deliver you completely or your loved one. But today we end with the words of scripture that we had read earlier, um, Second John, and we'll read verse 7 and verse 8. Second John verse 7 and verse 8. And the Bible says, For many deceivers have gone out into the world, those who do not confess the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh, such a one is the deceiver and the antichrist. Watch yourselves so that you may not lose what we have worked for, but may win a full reward. Our prayer is that you may not lose that which Christ has granted you and that eventually you may actually win the full reward. Until then, God keep you.